5, 1 to 5. Okay, ready? Begin. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Everyone that loveth him, that begot loveth him, begotteth of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, Lord, thank you once again for, for preparing our hearts for the message that we're going to uh, study and going to listen. I pray, Lord, that you will I speak to each every one of us. May the Holy Spirit be our teacher this afternoon. And I pray, Lord, you will give words to my mouth as I study this. And I pray as uh, this uh, message as uh, I uh, study as a blessing to me and it will be a blessing to, to, to your people. And also I pray, Lord, that in, as we study this, may your name be lifted up and may be glorified in our midst. We praise you and glorify your name. Forgive us, Lord, from our sins. All these things I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you all may be seated. So like what I've said uh, this afternoon, we are uh, studying the, the book of John. It is uh, the, the common, the, the, the theme of this uh, epistle of John actually it's about fellowship in order to have a fellowship we must have a personal relationship with the Lord and as uh, as we have a personal relationship with the Lord uh, we we're going to have love so you, if you will read all the epistle of John the John the first and second and third John mostly he's concentrating about love he's telling about love because he saw the importance of love in Christian life so even during his time during his day uh, he saw that there is a, a danger and we know that as we read the Bible Apostle Paul is keep on warning us there are some people in the church that uh, the devil is uh, they put that there in order to destroy the church because that what the devil wants to do in the in, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ he wants to destroy it but uh, as we study the Word of God, we can see how we can uh, battle with that, uh, the plan of the devil. So one, one thing is we need to love each other. So that's what we're going to study today in, verse, in chapter 5 of 1st John. Uh, the title of the message today is uh, Being Born of God. Being Born of God. Now, how... how, how how can we become uh, born of God? And in here in 1st John chapter 5 verse 1 it says here, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Those who believe that Jesus is the Christ. It's not only just believing because we know that there is a belief that uh, the devil also believed. And they trembled. This is uh, the, if we're going to study more about that. This is a different belief. Believe that you are putting your your faith. You are uh, repenting of your sin. You accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And then here, whosoever believeth that, that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth loveth Him that begot loveth Him also that is begotten of Him. So. Yung una kong binasa do parang ang hirap uh, intindihin. Parang nagugulan. Pero when you carefully read and uh, ask, uh, search for other, uh, ano ba tawag doon? Commentary. And you can see na ganun pala ang ibig sabihin. So, and the Bible, and number one, being born of God. Being born of God is the source of love. This is the source of love. If you are not Born of God, you know your love is not that uh, real. Because you know, people can love. But that love is not the love that comes from God. Only the Son of God or for those who, who is born of God can give the true love to each other. And give true love to God. It says here, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Those who believe 
that Jesus Christ is born of God. John has often mentioned being born of God. He is telling that being born of God in 1 John chapter 2, verse 29, he says there, If ye know that he is righteous, ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. He's telling he is born of him if you know that he is righteous. And then in 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. So whosoever born of God doth not commit sin. Maybe you are thinking, oh, we cannot commit sin. It's impossible. No, no, we studied that before. We know that the, the, the new man that, put, that we have cannot sin anymore. It was our flesh. Like Paul says, uh, uh, sabi niya, uh, in my flesh there is no walang uh, mabuti. Dwell it no good thing. It was the flesh that do it sin. It is not our new nature. That's why there is a battle between our our uh, there is spiritual battle in battle in our life. Who will be who will win the our our new new uh, being or our old nature. So it's up to us. It says here, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he cannot sin. And we know that because he is born of God. And another in verse 1 John 4, 7, he said, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. So John is speaking about born of God. Now, how, how one is born of God? How can we be born of God? Here he tells us how one is born of God. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ, this means believing that Jesus is their Messiah, not just the Messiah in a uh, generic sense or by, they, uh, by knowing it, but by personally uh, experiencing it. They need to believe about that. We are born again of God when we put our trust on Jesus and his saving work in our lives. So there, there if you are listening to other preacher, those who don't uh, rely their message on the word of God, they are they saying that if you want to be saved, you want to become born of God, if you want to go to heaven, there are so many ways in order to to go to heaven. They said you need to become good. You know, when I was a child, when I uh, am growing up, I always listen because in our in the Philippines in public school, uh, we are young. Uh, and what done? For and not forced. We are required to attend religious. We have a subject religion. So we are listening, and then they said you need to become a good person in order to go to heaven, and that's what they put on my mind. So I need to become a good person. But when I evaluate myself, nothing good in me. That's why uh, I, think, I think it's impossible to go to heaven. But when I heard the word of God, so there is a way. The Lord says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, you know, we are born again when we put our trust on Jesus Christ and his saving work. John's great emphasis has been on love. But he never wants anyone to believe they earn salvation by loving others. We cannot earn salvation by loving others. It, that's I, what I mean here, because many people who... Example, you are a parent. You love your children. Uh, it doesn't. Uh, we, it will not save. It will not save you from hell because you love your children. You love the people that that are loving. That's not what John said. He says that we can be saved by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. We also understand that John was not talking about a mere intellectual acceptance of Jesus being a Messiah. As uh, as the what I've said in James chapter two, just only simply believing, even the devil is believing. Instead, he means a trust in and reliance on Jesus as Messiah. We need to put our trust on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to realize that we cannot do anything without the Lord Jesus Christ. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can save us by believing on Him. And not only that, we are born of God when we believe that Jesus. Is the Christ additionally John makes it plain we must believe Jesus is the Christ he is the true Messiah because there are many religion today they are teaching that like the Muslim they said Muhammad is the uh, their their uh, Savior some are Buddha they said Buddha is our Savior some the Confucius in uh, China that's why they are Confucius 
So, yeah, Confucius. I don't know why they give that name. So they we they 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 think that they those people can save them. They believe, but the Bible is telling that we need to believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the true Messiah. He is not only just a Messiah, but he is the true messiah jesus is the christ and we know the meaning of christ christ means the messiah so that's uh, our being born again a uh, being born of god is the source of love that was uh, and then number two being born of god has its effect what is the effect of being born again or being born of god in the second phrase of verse one uh, it says here and everyone that loveth him that begot loveth him also that is begotten of him now we will the the effect of being born of god is we will love god it says here and everyone that loveth him that begot so ito yung ang ating panginoon and loveth him also that is begotten of him so it means we will not only love god but we will also love others who are begotten of him it means we need to love each other now it is assumed that we we will love God because we are born again into his family but it is also assumed that we will love others who are begotten of him our brothers and sister in Christ we need to love you know it's uh, like what I'm saying because I I always preach about John about love it's easy to say to that you love your brother and sister but it's different to prove it like what we are experiencing today we can, how, how can i apply the love of god how can i uh, apply this how can i put it in our heart you know the bible is giving us also wisdom how to to apply that love it doesn't mean that if you are uh yung uh, parang niloloko ka na o inuuto-uto ka na I just let it go no god give us a wisdom we need to think about that we need to be wise the Bible says we need to be uh, harmless like a dove and wise as a serpent. So God is also, in, we, we must be in balance. You don't say, oh, whatever they do to me, even they harm me, even they, they do bad things to me, I really love them. No, God is uh, teaching us also how to, to show that love. Because love, we know love, godly love is doing good for others. But if we think that that things that will not help them uh, or help us, we need to think about that. We need to balance it. And then, this is the common ground of Christian, the love. We need to love each other. To love all others in the family of God means that you do not limit our, you, our love to our uh, denomination or group or our, our uh, co-workers and, and our uh, political perspective if we have the same perspective or to our own uh, theolo theological belief if any of these things mean more to us than our common salvation and the common lordship of jesus christ then something is very wrong our common common uh, ground of loving each other is because we are uh, born of god we are born again so that's why the bible is telling us we need to be to to do good to every man especially unto the household of faith so maybe they are thinking oh why well, you are not giving favor to other people because the bible is telling us we are we love them but we need to love more our brethren that is being born again has its effect and then number three being born of god means keeping his commandment we need to keep his commandment in first john chapter two and three says here by this we know that we love the children of god when we love god and keep his commandment and verse 3 for this is the love of god that we keep his commandment and his commandment are not grievous so being born of god means keeping his commandment i remember in matthew chapter 22 the there's a i forgot the one who asked about what is the greatest commandment in matthew 22 36 uh can you go there matthew 22 verse 36 to 40 he said master which is the great commandment in the law jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind 
this is the first and great commandment. And then Jesus Christ continued, and the second is like unto it. The same as the first, almost uh, similar. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Jesus is telling that, that love will take care of all the commandments in the Bible. Because of our love, you know, we can uh, read the Bible. Jesus, the, God's, uh, the Bible is telling us to study to show thyself. How can we do that if we don't have love? We love God, we will read the Bible. We love God, we share the gospel. We, because of love, we can, uh, we, can, uh, we can give. We love God, that's why we can do all these things. That's why Jesus Christ says, uh, all the commandments are hanging here. That you love the Lord your God and love others as yourself. And then also he says that obedience to God demonstrate our love to him and the brethren how can we see that a person really loved god and the brethren by obeying god it says here by this we know that we love the children of god just as much our love for the people of god reflects our love for god and uh, it was a, it's written in john 3 10 it says there in this the children of god are manifest so we can see if you really are the children of god and the children of the devil who should Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. And also in John 3.17, it says here, But whoso hath this world's good, and seeth his brother have need, and shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? And by this we know that we love God by obeying the, the commandment of God. And you... The Bible says, if you are, you said you love your brother and then you are not uh, helping, you are not praying, you are, you are a liar. The Bible says you are not liar. It's not the true love. It's just like, uh, yeah, you want to say that you love others, but you really don't love. The first way for a child of God to love his brother and sister in Christ is to love God and to obey Him. So we need to love God and obey Him so that we can prove that we really love our brothers and sisters. Like, uh, you know, if you love the parents, if you love the, you have a friend, you love your parents, you also love their children. Same way, if you love God, you love the children of God. Simple as, uh, same like that. It says, when we love God and keep His commandment, a Christian who does not love God or keep His commandment is of little effective use in the body of Christ. This is true even though he or she might be involved in much ministry and hold an official official position of the service in the church so it will really come up to uh, to open that you really you really me you mean what you say that you really love god because if you are not you say you love god but you don't want to participate you don't want to join the the uh, the ministry of the church the Bible says, oh, I think you, oh, you're not saying the truth. That's why uh, we need to, to examine our self. When, we, when our love and obedience for God grows cold, we do not only harm ourselves, we harm our brothers and sisters also. So um, I really experienced this it, uh, when I, uh, I think I am still... Uh, love god but i i don't want to participate anymore i don't want to come to the church my my mind is set up in in the world it doesn't it, it really hurt myself and my spiritual life and not only that even those who are uh those who are uh, the p the especially the young people because i wa i started when i was in high school i wa i was a uh, uh, Sunday school teacher and those my student I remember uh, Sister Jalil and Sister K they are my student and when they see that I was uh, not attending the church they really also hurt also so that's why we need to be careful we need to not only think of ourselves but to think also of others if we will not love and obey God for our own sake then we should at least do it out of love for others so we need to do that and then it says here for this is the love of God that we keep 
His commandments. So the love of God is also to keep His commandment. The one who says he loves God yet walks in a lifestyle of conscious disobedience is like a believer who say they walk in fellowship with God yet walk in darkness. In 1 John 1, 6, sabi sa 1 John 1, 6, If we say that we have fellowship with Him, with God, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. So we don't have the truth if we are saying we love God, but if they cannot see it in our life. Maybe they said, oh, you cannot uh, uh, being uh, born again or being, uh, being a Christian cannot uh, yung parba, it is a personal uh, na, uh, relationship with God. Only God knows and the person knows. Yeah, that's true. But we can also see. The Bible is uh, uh, warning us also to be careful to those people who are saying they are born again. I am one of you. That's why uh, uh, now, now we have a meeting nowadays that we need to be, act, be very careful for those uh, people we are uh, inviting here. That's why we have our church polity to protect the church, not to protect, it, uh, not to protect someone else. But we need to protect the church. Uh, if we will just uh, hang on that uh, polity, for sure, our uh, it will uh, our life is uh, smooth and easy. But God, uh, it, 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 I, I mean, uh, what I mean is, although we, we can have a problem and we can have some uh, uh, trials and temptation, but God will always there for us because we are base, we base our our uh, stand and doctrine on the on the Bible. So, it says here, the one who says he loves God. Yeah, they are liar. If you say you love God, but you are walking in darkness. Surely John had the words in Jesus in mind. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So we need to keep the commandments of God in order to prove that we really love God. See, you can say, oh yes, I love the Lord, but his, the commandment of God is difficult to follow. So it's a different thing. Love for God will show itself in obedience. Okay? Christians frequently attempt to turn love for God into an emotional experience. We think that love for God is just like an emotion that I feel uh, I really so... I don't know the feeling for those who are... Uh, you know the feeling if you are in love, right? You are just in a cloud nine. It's it's different feeling, especially when you... Court. I, well, I I remember when I court my wife. I really uh, I don't I can I cannot explain that feeling. So love is not that like that. Love is not a feeling. So the love for God will show itself in obedience. You know if you love a person if they they are obeying God. Even you know, your children. You know you love. Uh, uh, your children, you can uh, prove that they love you if they are obeying you. If they don't obey you, for sure they don't respect and they don't love you. Something like that. So it's uh, the parents' fault. And His commandments are not grievous. You know God's commandment is not uh, burden, burdensome. It's not grievous. Some Christians feel ver very burdened by the commandments of God. Yet John insists that they are not burdensome. It's not... Uh, Hindi to pabigat. Because uh, I remember when, uh, all, uh, I, can, I cannot give example for others, I remember my father is giving us uh, some uh, rules in our house. You need to do this, to do that, to do... He said, it's difficult to do. Why my father is trying to, 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 to hold yung pigilin yung mag-enjoy kami. Masa English yun. No? So, ganun yung parang... Uh, you think that, that uh, I'm thinking that my parents doesn't want me to enjoy life. I think my father is so boring. He, dis he wants to do this, to do that, to do that, but I just want to do something. That's what also what happening to my children. He said, oh, I'm boring, oh, you're boring. Uh, let's uh, do this. And you need to do this, to do that before you, you will play. But I uh, thank God they also follow. You know, the commandment of God is not grievous. His commandment 
are not grievous when we see how wise and good the commandments of God are. If we really understand the commandment of God, we will see, oh, it's not really burdensome or grievous. They are gifts from Him to show us the best and most fulfilling life possible. God's commands are like the manufacturer's handbook for life. He tells us what to do because He knows how to work best. So God's commands are not given to bind or to pain us or because God is like an uh, irritated old man. So the commandment of God is just is not like just uh, holding us to enjoy life. You know, God wants us to uh, to to be joyful in serving Him. Imagine if if God is giving us these things, and you you if you are not really uh, born of God or you really not a son of God, you really pay. You will feel the pressure. Why I'm doing this? Why I need to wake up early to read the Bible? Why I need to attend the church? Why? It's really difficult to do that. You know, examine yourself for sure. I think you don't have personal relationship with, relationship with God. But if you are so, uh, uh, I said, read the Bible and you are so excited to read the Bible, we, uh, we come here to listen to the Word of God. You are excited. Uh, the, uh, our pastor told us that we are so excited when we are watching uh, uh, our favorite movie, our favorite sport. Sometimes we are sitting on the edge of the chair in order to, to cheer and sometimes we don't sit down because we are so excited on what we are doing. But when it comes to, to God, we think that is, it's really a burden for me to do this. But uh, uh, we need to examine ourselves. If it's a burden some to us to do the commandment of God, we need to, to, to check our uh, relationship to God. Maybe we are, we are not. Uh, the Bible says you are a liar. If you say you love God but you don't want to obey and you think the commandment of God is grievous, His commandments are not grievous. And then, His commandments are not grievous because when we are born again, we are given a new heart. No? Before, we really don't like to attend, to read the Bible, but God changed our hearts. He gave us a new heart, and heart which is by instinct wish to please God. That heart is, uh, is we, we will, uh, the Holy Spirit in our hearts will always uh, give us, a, will tell us that we need to do this, and it will uh, show us that the, the things about the Word of God is not grievous, especially His commandments. And His commandments are not grievous when we compare them to the religious rules of men made up. If you're going to compare what God wants us to do and to the others, you can see especially, uh, I don't know, I think most of us here are Catholic before. And there are seven ways how to go to heaven. I think it's difficult to, to, what do you call that? Yung masunod, to obey it. It's difficult to, to follow or obey it. But if you're going to look the Word of God, there is no... All things can be uh, can be done by the grace of God, but for those who are uh, telling uh, you need to be good in order to to go to heaven, how you will think how much good I need to do in order to go to heaven is it enough, or I need to stop because I I have me, uh, I do I did too much good in my life, so it's really difficult for those teaching, but. When it comes to the teaching of the Word of God, you know, we, if, you, if we really understand His commandment, it is not really burdensome. Especially if you really love the Lord, because if you love a person, you are willing to do whatever uh, those person wants for you to do. And His commandments, His commandments are not grievous when we really love God. So this is the secret. If we really love God, his commandment is not difficult to obey. You know, uh, reading the Bible, praying, and sharing the gospel, going to the outreach. I know we feel tired, especially when we are going to the outreach. Sometimes we, we feel it's normal for us because we work uh, the whole week and then we feel tired. That's what, that's what we need to, to overcome. 
because if we really love the Lord God all those uh, difficulty all those uh, problems will be will be gone will be vanish because we love the Lord you know when we say we love God and then we are still complaining on what God wants us to do you need to check our ourself so if we his commandments is not grievous because uh, when we really love God when we love God we will want to obey him and please him I hope this is our prayer in our life Lord I really love you I want to obey you I want to please you because many times in our life we want to please others than God even in a uh, in our school in our school uh, I want to please the uh, my, our head teacher our director in order for me to to increase my salary but every time I do that my salary is going down and then said siya wala bahala na kayo hindi ko na impress kayo impress ko lang sarili ko parang ganun di ba because our motive is wrong because we want to please others but if we will please God you know if we will please God we will do our job on the standard of the Lord it's not standard of, of men like uh, oh I don't that's why uh, you know during this pandemic so we we learn many things uh, we know many people their uh, their personality and also for us our teachers you know it's really difficult to prepare in online class before I just wake up and go to school I'm driving motor I'm thinking what lesson will I teach and then yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's, it's there yeah, stand up okay class now because I, I taught them for many years five years I memorize my lesson so what is matter matter is does it matter as I said <laughs> so something like that so it, but now in online class you need to prepare you need to search everything because it's difficult to start to wake up stand up and then, uh, to show yourself in the computer and then you have nothing to say so <laughs> that's difficult uh, you can you can talk but you don't know because in, in western they are not uh, the student it's their choice if they want to show their face or not most of my student it's only name I don't know if they are still there <laughs> Yeah, I just say, uh, I say, I said, oh, Sakana is not here anymore. Yeah, hey, teacher, she's not here. And then, teacher, I'm here. <laughs> so it's really difficult. So, uh, <laughs> so his, yeah, his commandments is not grievous. When we really, when we really love God, you know, all things are 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 possible if we, we really love the Lord we can do it by the grace of God remember Jacob when he served Laban seven years he served for uh, Rachel yeah. but it seems only just a few days of seven years because he really loved Rachel and then we know the story and then another seven years it's not a uh, Parang wala naman, bali wala sa kanya yung time. So I remember when you are in love, just it seems that the yung oras ay napaka-iksi. I hope that uh, we will feel also that with God. We think that, but if we really love God, if we really uh, truly love the Lord, we will think that His commandment is not grievous. And then last, being born of God is the source of victory. So being born of God is the source of victory. We can become victorious if we are born of God. And here in verse 5 and 4, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. It says here, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. John begins with the principle that is so simple, yet so powerful. If we are born of God, we will, be, we will overcome the world. You can overcome the world if you are born of God. 
this is uh, really true because in for myself I really when I I'm not yet a born again Christian I really try to change my life I really try to do good but I cannot overcome it I really cannot do that but when I surrender to God when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ so all these things we can overcome because that's the promise of God whatsoever is born of God overcome it the world maybe if you experience oh at this moment I really cannot overcome the world it's difficult for me or maybe you ask also again yourself maybe you are not born of God we will overcome the world if we are born of God the idea that anything born of God could be defeated by this world was strange in this epistle and it should be strange to us so maybe you're thinking that we cannot overcome the world maybe you are asking for advice oh, it's difficult to overcome the world you know one simple answer you need to become born of God if you will born of God you can overcome the world that's why the Bible says we are more than conquerors we are victorious in the Lord Jesus Christ and it says here and this is the victory that overcome the world even our faith since believing on him is the key to being born of God the key to victory is faith so if we want to become victorious we need to have faith in God because we really can do that by ourselves by uh, is thinking by ourselves we need God in our we need to have faith what is faith we know that faith is um, is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things not seen and not only an initial just like come to the altar but a consistently abiding in faith it's not just an emotion consistently abiding in faith an ongoing reliance and trust upon Jesus Christ we can overcome the world by continue abiding by faith and relying on the Lord Jesus Christ and who is he that overcome the world in verse 5 but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God the life of abiding faith and trust in Jesus Christ is the life that overcomes the pressure and temptation of the world this is the secret how we can overcome this pressure and temptation of the world but if we will just do it by ourselves it's really impossible only by the grace of God we can be victor victorious through faith knowing who Jesus is not just a matter of facts of information but of as food for life if it feel fills the soul with so great thing concerning so who is he that overcome the world this tells us we overcome primarily because of who we are in Christ not because of what we do we overcome because we are born of God so that's the secret we, we are born of God and we are born of God because we believe that Jesus is the Son of God again not in a mere intellectual sense but we put our lives on the fact that Jesus is the Son of God for us so it doesn't mean that you believe oh you know, if you will carefully study this belief it's not just like believing it's just putting your trust on 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 the person you believe and you are you will rely on that person who is the Lord Jesus Christ and the last how is it we can overcome how can how is it we can become world overcomers how can we overcome the world in Jesus in John 16 33 we will uh, and in this in John 16 33 these things I, ha I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world Jesus Christ overcome the world and then because Jesus has overcome the world as we abide in him we are overcomers in Jesus remember because we are that's why the Lord says you need to abide in me and I in you you cannot bear fruit you cannot overcome these things you cannot overcome this problem without abiding in me and we cannot abide on God if we are not born of God and then John said of those who were growing in their walk with Jesus you have overcome the wicked one that's what in 1st John 2 13 
to 14 says here i write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning i write unto you young men because ye have overcome the wicked see keep on overcoming i write unto you little children because ye have known the father in verse 14 i have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning and i have written unto you young men because ye are strong and the word of god abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one so we can overcome all these things by abiding and being born again overcomers have a special place in the world to come so we have a special place in the millennium jesus promised to him who overcomes in revelation 321 let's read this revelation 321 to him that overcometh will i grant to sit with me in my throne even as I also overcame and I'm set down with my father in his throne you know uh, if you listen to the preaching of Pastor Duenas we are in Christ sitting in the father although we are physically here but our spirit is there sitting with Lord. we are in Christ so imagine that we are in Christ and God said those who overcome overcomers I will let you sit also on the throne and then overcomers overcome because the blood of jesus overcomes satan's accusation the word of their testimony overcomes satan's deception and loving not their lives overcomes satan violence in revelation 12 11 revelation 12 11 and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb see and by the word of their testimony they love not their lives unto that so it's simply telling us that we can overcome the world if we really born of god we can uh we can be uh, that's what uh what's uh, saying here that being born again we know how to being born again being born again being born of god is the source of love being born of god has it effect and being born of God means keeping his commandment and being born of God is the source of victory I hope this uh, this message will uh, encourage us if we are feeling uh, uh, depressed we are feeling sad maybe you're thinking I cannot overcome this the Bible says we can overcome by the Word of God we have we are experiencing problems in our life financially and uh, in our family our brethren we have problems but i know god is promising us we can overcome this by uh by a if we will just rely on the lord jesus christ if we are really born of god we can overcome by faith god bless and let's pray our father in heaven lord thank you once again